the most carbon fibred rifle I have had on the channel to date. This thing is super, super lightweight, weighing in at, well, what you can see at the top of the screen because I have actually got to weigh this rifle myself because I cannot find a accurate weight of it anywhere, not even on Fierce's website. So that is the weight of this rifle at the top of the screen, unloaded and unscoped. Hi guys, this is Rack and Load. And it's kind of funny really, kind of ironic. Me being an ex-undertaker by profession, no, not a wrestler, but you know, I see dead people kind of undertaker. Kind of ironic that I have a Reaper lying on the table in front of me. Bit weird, I don't know, I guess that's some sort of weird undertaker's humor there. But anyway, <laughs> moving on. The Fierce Reaper, this thing is got, it's got loads of carbon fiber on it. It is proper carboned, more carbon than Han Solo, let me tell you. It is really, really nice. If you like carbon fiber, then I think this is the rifle for you. So let's just throw out some specs then. So the Fierce Reaper, it is predominantly a hunting rifle. It is lightweight. It does bounce a little bit. This one is in 6.5 Creedmoor. Other calibers are available. So calibers that are available are six millimeter, 6.5 Creedmoor, like what we've got on here. 6.5 PRC, seven mil REM mag, 28 Nosler, 308 Winchester, 300 Win mag, and 300 PRC as well. So a variety of calibers. This 6.5 Creedmoor available in lengths of barrel from 22 inch to 24 inch. And this one is a one in eight twist on this rifle. Now, looking at the specs of this rifle, uh, I'll tell you what it pretty much says on Fierce's website. So this is the, mod the model of this rifle, it's the Reaper, as I've already said. Stainless steel action with a two lug triad whatever that means we'll look at that closely in a minute guaranteed half moa at 100 yards mm, yeah we'll get into that in a minute the muzzle brake although this one hasn't got one on and do you know what i've probably left it in the box we'll look at the box in a minute but you can get a muzzle, muzzle brake with this one um various options available I don't think it has got one in the box, if I'm perfectly honest. Calibers, I've pretty much stated the calibers. Special features of this rifle. So, the chassis is basically ultra lightweight. It's got an alloy frame. It's got V-lock bedding. You can get a hinged stock as well. This one is fixed. You can get uh, one with a um, Picatinny rail, sort of integral pic Picatinny rail for a bipod. This one hasn't got it, it's got all the M-lock uh, on this carbon fibre handguard here. The magazine is a detachable, they call it Accuridge mag box, which is very cool, we'll have a look at that in a minute. Bolt handle is a 70, uh, well it has a 70 degree throw and it is called a tac knob, okay? Tack knob, tactical knob on that bolt handle. Adjustable trigger. They're calling it the Bix and Andy trigger, which is weird. Um, adjustable from one to three pounds. Two position safety catch. Fierce C3 carbon fiber barrel. Match grade. And the thread is five eighth by 24 on the end of the muzzle, so you can throw on a mod or a muzzle brake, whatever you sort of see fit. That is, that is pretty much it for the, the specs. Um, You know, I'm just sort of reading that off uh, Fierce's website, go check them out yourself. But let's jump into a full on rack review. So I'll just basically tell you how it is and what I thought of this rifle. Now, it was flipping accurate. I ain't gonna lie, it was accurate. Not with all ammo that I used, but I did seem to find the ammo that it liked after quite a bit of testing, but we'll talk about that 
in a minute. Have we got a gripe or two about this rifle? Uh, mm, probably a minor one, but I think that is, I think that's the carbon fibery sort of gripe that I have. I've noticed it on a lot of rifles that are done in carbon fiber. You always get like a seam somewhere. I would, yeah, I don't know. I suppose I, I don't, I know nothing about the manufacture of carbon fiber. So um, I guess I can't really comment on it, but I don't know. I always find sometimes the finish of carbon fiber isn't perfect, but who cares when it's ultra lightweight? I mean, does it really matter? Anyway, looking at the footage, as you can see, at the range, this thing was, it felt a little bit bouncy, to be fair, but it is ultra lightweight and you wouldn't use it in a, you know, in a target, you wouldn't really use it in a target environment like what I was doing. It's more of a hunter, ultra, ultra lightweight. So I kind of get that. I did find, uh, well, let's, let's just, let's just take it from the top. I'm waffling on, taking it from the top. So from the recoil pad end, it has got a lovely soft recoil. I mean, that is proper squidgy soft. I do like that. Got a bit of traction on there, really nice. You've got a bench hook there on, bench rest hook on the stock. I kind of like that on a lot of rifles now. You, you seem to see it. Talking about the carbon fiber, this is kind of where I'm going to kind of mention the, my little carbon fiber gripey bits. There's just a few imperfections. I mean, you know, that will obviously, obviously differ from rifle to rifle, but I don't know. I just, I just picked up on it, you know, just looking at, looking at it close up. It is what it is. It's the manufacturing process of carbon fiber. I'm sure it is. Someone in the comments will put me right on that. But, a real, real nice recoil pad on there. You do kind of need it, even though this one is a 6.5 Creedmoor, which generally isn't very sort of bouncy, but with this being a lightweight rifle, it, I found it did jump a little bit. The only place that I found it a little bit uncomfortable, and I don't know whether it is the positioning of the cheek piece on sort of, you know, blame me. I guess you guys can blame me for that. I probably didn't have it in the perfect position. But occasionally, my fat face, I was, it was almost like that was sort of, because it was a little bit jumpy, it was almost like this bit was sort of digging in my cheek a little bit. I don't know. Blame me. That That's not the gun. That's me. I'm, I'm sure that'll be the position that I had this, uh, this cheek piece in. But look at the carbon fibre, though. Oh, my God. This thing has got more carbon fiber, more carbon fiber when I can say it, than a Formula One car. It really is something else. I've never seen so much carbon fiber on a rifle. All right, maybe I have, maybe on like a Seiko Carbon Wolf, which is like all carbon fiber, but the barrel isn't, you know, <laughs> but the full on stock is, but oh my God, this thing is so, so nice. And look at that carbon fiber there i don't know what they call that pattern it's almost like a marble effect on the uh what would be a buffer tube that is so so nice so nice fierce's claw logo all over this rifle really cool look how they've done it on the pistol grip ar style or should i say pattern pistol grip i guess but ultra lightweight look at that it's hollowed out you cannot get a um, a lighter weight pistol grip than that. I mean, they've even cut, you know, like I say, they've even cut out the uh, the claw marks there. That looks so so cool. When you actually feel this thing in your shoulder, it's almost a little bit unner unnerving. You think God, this thing is. It almost feels brittle. I know carbon fiber isn't brittle. It's really strong, but it almost feels. <laughs> like it's brittle it's like oh god is the whole thing just going to shatter like glass when you pull the trigger but obviously you know it's as tough as i guess it's as tough as steel what, what is it i don't know it, it's tough it's real tough um moving on to the, so that's the pistol grip moving on to the actual action i'll put it down a bit it's not like it's weighing a ton or anything but i just want to put it down for a better better sort of shot 
on this thing. Excuse all the ink on my hand. I had finished marking up my targets um, and then I got covered in my marker pen. Because basically at the range what I do is I just mark them dead briefly with what ammo I've used. And then when I get back here in the rat cave, I'll do them a bit better so it looks better for camera. And yeah, I got covered in my marker pen. Um, so yeah, the action. Real, real nice action. I love the way... Well, I love the coloration. It's almost like in this titanium finish. Looks sick. Reaper there. Really, really cool. They have shaved as much weight off this rifle as they possibly can. I mean, look at the bolt handle. In fact, we'll take the bolt handle out. Uh, once I've shown you that throw, look at that 70 degree th throw on there. Uh, real nice action to it as well. And there is a fluted bolt handle. Sorry, a fluted bolt there, when I can say it. Let's just take this uh, bolt handle out and drop in the magazine as well. I can show you the magazine. Can't I? It's all right, it's all right. I've not broke it, I've not broke it. Don't, don't worry. Kindly on loan from Ray Trade, by the way. They may not send me another one again after I've just sort of dropped this one a little bit. Um, moving on. Uh, that is the bolt hand the bolt itself fluted get it on camera better really nice absolutely solid but like i was saying look how much meat they've took out of the bolt handle and that is the tack knob very comfortable to use really nice magazines steel magazines very, very tough, really, really nice to load. No problems, no issues, no feed issues, nothing whatsoever. All totally really good, locking solid. Got the logo on there, the claw logo, love that. Everything locks in solid. That is your mag release here, this lever. Everything is super, super positive. I really, really like that. The bolt, like I said, just re a real nice positive bolt. Love that 70 degree throw. Ejection was really good. Just no, no issues with this rifle whatsoever. I call that a Remington 700 style safety catch in the sort of same position as you'd find on a Remington 700. Looking at the other side, swinging it round. Real nice rifle, guys. Real nice. And then let's have a closer look at this handguard. Full carbon fibre handguard. M-lock configuration. So you can throw on accessories. Nothing on this whatsoever. I was shooting it off my Coldwell lead sled, as you can see in the footage. So no need for a bipod or anything. And then there's that. Awesome carbon fiber barrel, the C1 barrel, and then the threaded muzzle there. And there's your thread protector. So, oh, I'll take it off, I'll show you. There we go, there's the thread, thread protector there. Very, very, very cool, cool rifle. Ultra, ultra lightweight. I mean, stupidly light. In fact, I think if I'd got this one in 308, I would have been hanging on for dear life, pretty much, because this thing would have bounced a little bit. It certainly would, but it is what it is. Oh, rack, you need to man up. Right, let's talk about accuracy. Now, this is quite interesting. So I will show you show you my worst targets first, okay? I didn't have a vast amount of ammo. Three types of ammo I had. Um, and I used other stuff sort of for just sort of nailing tar, you know, nailing gongs and stuff like that. Sort of just breaking it in. Brand new rifle, so we've got to take this into consideration, guys. I always say this whenever I show targets. This is my shooting. Yeah, there, there's my excuse straight away. Um, plus, I'm left-handed. There's another excuse. Uh, that's just about all I can sort of um, blame my shooting on, I guess. Uh, you guys will do way better. 
you snipers out there, I know you will. I know you will, but these are my results. This was using Hornaday Superformance 120 grain GMX. This is the non-target stuff, the lead free. I wasn't amazed with this stuff, with how it performed in this rifle, okay? No wind, these are three shot groups. Make uh, your own minds up about that. That's one type, that was my worst one. This one was with uh, Cellular and Bellet Blue, again, non-toxic. Uh, same weight, 120 grain TXRG. Uh, heads were on this nice group there and then oh a flyer there there's two in there that was not amazing but like I said brand new rifle um not run in I know you know rifle manu manufacturers and like fierce they guarantee sub moa straight out of the box but this was me shooting real world, not sort of in a tunnel or anything like that. That's a nice group. That was Cellar and Bellet Blue, the non-toxic stuff. And then this was my best target. I was really happy with this. Very, very accurate. Hornaday Precision Hunter. Excuse the state of the target. I shredded it a few in a few bits as well. Again, 100 shot, 100 shots, 100 yards, no wind, three shot groups. Boom. Happy with that, happy with them too, Sm hence the smiley face. Happy, well, happy with them all, you know, is what it is. So. Excuse that one, I put my finger through that one when I was tearing it off the target, so off the target board. So yeah, pretty damn accurate. Now, in between the changing of ammo, I was putting the new ammo, I was putting, um, three or four shots onto a gong just to get the barrel accustomed to that round. And then obviously I was just letting the barrel cool down. Then I would shoot. That was my shooting, you know, with probably the ammo, whichever they used at um, testing with this rifle, I guess that would be the stuff to use, but it doesn't, I don't think it states what they actually used, uh, you know, when they were testing, when Fears were actually testing this rifle, how they got their uh, half MOA results. So, um, but if I if I'd known what ammo that was, I would have got hold of it and I would have tested that. You know, obviously with my excuses thrown in. But no, guys, what a real nice rifle. Let's have a look. I'm just wandering down the rat cave. Let's have a look at the box. No, it doesn't because it's called the Reaper. It doesn't come in a coffin. Don't worry. Um, cardboard box okay what is in the box uh, let's have a look what's in the box uh, not much okay it is a polystyrene sort of cut out you do get uh, a few little bits you get whatever that is a little m-lock um, adapter there So you get that, I think that's for a sling swivel stud. And then this is the um, the manual here, a little bit sort of bruised and battered out of the box. So all your sort of usual do's and don'ts. Um, it's not it's not an amazing manual. It's just more of a safety thing. So there's no sort of nice pictures to look at. But yeah, as far as the, the box go, goes, it's nothing massively um, exciting or oh, wrecking the joint, let me get rid of that. So yeah, nothing massively amazing uh, with the box. So yeah, really, really nice rifle. Is it my cup of tea? I'm more of a target shooter than a hunter. Um, although, it, I don't know, it's nice. I think I'd want it a bit heavier, for, obviously for target shooting, so it's sort of less jumpy, but yeah, it, real nice. I think it would be a nice option for a hunter, without doubt, if you want a bit of carbon fiber bling and, you know, obviously super lightweight and obviously weatherproof as well. You know, this thing will withstand the elements. No problem whatsoever. Let's give that trigger a pull, see what it is doing. So it is adjustable, the trigger. 
I'll show you in a minute, but let's uh, let's just give it a pull. Oh, quite set, quite heavy. I've, I think, well, no, probably about right for a hunter. Three pounds, 8.8 .8 ounces on the trigger pull. You can adjust it, like I said here, um, like I said even, and here is where you do it. Uh, it's quite, it's quite sort of easily accessible. So there's, just having a look myself, uh, don't know if you can really see. But yeah, you can uh, adjust the, the trigger there. Nice, comfortable blade as well. I really like that. So let's show you inside the mag well as well. Let's give you a look down there. Don't know if you can really see much. But no, certainly a different looking rifle. You'll be amazed how lightweight this thing is. That is the first thing that really sort of uh, takes your breath away. But yeah, very nice, very accurate. A little jumpy because it is lightweight, but it's not a target rifle. It is a hunter. That is what you're going to use it for. Um, I mentioned the adjustable uh, cheek piece. Ambidextrous as well, apart from the bolt. Everything else is ambidextrous. All right, safety catch as well, but you know, it is what it is. A very, very nice looking rifle. Not cheap though, but I'm not going to sort of state the price. It, it is a high-end hunter. This is, there's no doubt about it. Wearing a Hawk. Sidewinder, no doubt. Threw on one of the new Sidewinder 30 SF. Uh, this one is a 6 to 32 times 56. Big old scope on there. Uh, just thought I'd give that a whirl and run it on this particular rifle. But yeah, a real nice, nice gun, guys. Um, yeah, not really my cup of tea. It's, you know, but I'm a, more of a target shooter than anything else. If I was a hunter, would I choose that? <clears throat> um, yeah, probably. Yeah, but I'm. I've got to be honest. I myself personally, I'm. I like a bit of carbon fiber, but I think, I think. Then this is my personal opinion. It's a, it's a bit much for me. I think the carbon fiber is. It does look totally cool. Don't get me wrong, but my personal taste, I think, it's a bit much. But but like I said, you see like um, a Seiko um, Carbon Wolf, it's full on carbon fibre stock, you know, so it, it is what it is. It's just whether you like the look of it. Anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap it up and leave it at that. Thanks for watching. That is your, <coughs> excuse me, losing my voice. That's why I am actually going to wrap it up. <laughs> I'm going to leave it at that. That is your rack and load review of the Fierce Reaper 6.5 Creedmoor hunting rifle. Full on carbon fibre. Very, very cool indeed. It definitely gets 10 out of 10 on the best looking cool or wow factor without a shadow of doubt. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. That is rack and load. See ya.